action. Mm-hmm. Every revolution needs a soundtrack. Mm-hmm. And so in 1971, Gil Scott Heron made a song called The Revolution Will Not Be Televised. Mm-hmm. And he was very specific with, with his words and how the revolution was going to happen. And it wasn't going to come through artists that promote pop culture. Mm-hmm. There, was a very specific, there was a very specific rhetoric at that time. I mean, two years prior to that, 1969, Fred, 1969, Fred Hampton got assassinated. I was going to say, can you set up like what that was looking like? Because I don't know. I, I don't know if I remember the words of the song and I don't know if I re- remember what was actually happening. And it was like the Black Panther Party. Mm. You know, this was the, the the transition from the civil rights movement to the black militant movement. Like, yeah, yeah. We're tired of asking for respect. It's time for us to go get our respect. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, y'all ain't finna sit here and keep putting your boots on our neck and we're just gonna sit there and just die easily. Nah. Mm-hmm. They wanted to fight back. And so, like, that was a revolutionary movement. That was a revolutionary moment. I mean, Fred Hampton was 19 years old, you know? Mm. And this young man spoke with so much power. He was so eloquent in the way he spoke. And I'm like... Oh, Wow. 19 yeah that's an awesome song 19 i mean no 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 i mean see so so fred hampton he was a revolutionary like he was a black panther okay like the thing the thing that made me so excited about fred hampton was that uh he he understood that the thing that was happening in america wasn't just a black issue it was a class issue Mm. he was like working class people have their uh the government is putting a foot on your necks man right and we have to stand up together and so he he was able to work with uh, the Nazi Party, um, but the, the the KKK, the Ku Klux Klan. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah, he had a lot of foresight. Then this was before Rodney King and all. Yeah, this is. Man, oh this yeah, is, this is, so he was ahead of the game. It's like sixty eight, you know. Yeah, he was. Ahead Th- this of the is game. the height of the civil rights movement. Okay. And so he's taking the position that we need to unify with the KKK. We need to unify with the Nazi Party because all of us uh, men that are angry with each other. We need to be angry with the system who's not creating uh, the opportunities for us to be successful and raise families. Absolutely. Addressing a very specific thing. Mm-hmm. And so when Gil Scott Heron, you know, uh, echoing that movement, he's, he's saying the revolution will not be televised. Mm-hmm. You're not going to see the revolution on NBC or MTV. None of these things. <laughs> right. Like they don't want, they're, they're not going to help you get freedom. Right. Yet people look at the news like it's such like a, a fact. I mean, they're just... Like they pan, they cherry pick stories, bring them to you, get you scared so that you don't do the thing that you need to do. Right. And I'm like, man, I want, like I started, I want to have a conversation about bad mothers in America. And I was like, man, that's a, that's not a good conversation. I want to get to the root of the issue. Right. Like, like right. 50, 50 plus years ago, men were ready to fight for and die for what they believed. And that was the idea of freedom. Mm. And so 50 years later, I'm looking around with all these powerful people, all these powerful tools. We have the, we have social media. We can say and do anything. Mm. And I don't hear nobody talking no freedom talk. Yeah. I see people, they want to they sit back and go back and forward on social media, but they don't want to come and do the work to work with other black men. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you think, so you think, you think that there's less black men or black people that are willing to die for what they believe in? Cowards cowards mm-hmm. they get so mad at me i don't i don't care like i'm looking at we have all the tools to fight oppression and instead of fighting oppression we say i'm pro- i'm oppressed <laughs> they stopping me yeah 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 man i'm it's for real like fault. like i'm aspirational i think that this youtube thing i think that social media has the power to reach people so quickly you know yeah i mean my numbers from the last couple of days is shit you get thirty thousand views you yeah. know quickly quickly yeah. the message travels so fast mm-hmm. and so me i believe in building i believe like the black panther party was one of the most important organizations to ever exist yeah i, I be- agree i believe men working with men is one of the most powerful units that can ever exist it was a very strong infrastructure for sure and so when I'm building a wonderful media company, the first thing I do is extend my hand to other black men and say, come create with me. You know what they do? What? Nothing. They don't show up? <laughs> Shit. They do, a, they do what a whole lot of black men do. Nothing. A bunch of nothing. Bump them, bump them gums, huh? Talk mm. about it, talk about it, talk about it. Won't show up. What's up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you feel it. I know you mm-hmm. hit it right there in your heart muscle. Yeah. You don't have the courage to work with other men. Why? Because I'm that nigga in the room by myself. Mm-hmm. Get in the room with other niggas and are you that nigga? No. What's mm-hmm. up? Nobody wants to walk into Man, a room like that. Don't talk about don't talk like that. Why not? 
Because, right. because when you're fighting for freedom, you have to have a level. Of, you have to have a level of aggression to go get the thing that you want. Yeah, and people ain't passionate. And I asked these gentlemen, I'm like, "Hey, what do you want, huh? Mm -hmm. You want twiddle your thumbs, huh? Mm -hmm. You, you want to say stupid ass words, don't you? Yeah, they don't want to fight. Because what is their passion? And look, and, yeah. they, and they hear the word fight, and it sounds so aggressive. Mm -hmm. But like, don't you have some intelligence? Like right now, with the tools that we have, fighting back with media, like it's counter into like uh, the only way that you can combat bad speech is with good speech. Mm -hmm. If I beat up one man who says a bad thing, there's still other people saying the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. And so I have to engage in conversation with this person and I want to hear why you think what you think. And then I'm going to articulate what I think. And maybe we could drink a beer. That's the best battles when you understand what they understand. So, <laughs> you have to use their understanding to your advantage to get them to digest what you need them to. Humility is an amazing thing. Mm. Like, like I don't, I don't know everything. <laughs> that would require so much from somebody. I get so excited when I sit around powerful people because I get the opportunity to learn. Right. It gets me so excited to ask questions. I'm like, damn. Mm -hmm. And expect to, to learn from powerful people is so much better than to like, you know, you can learn so many things from YouTube or reading a book. Like that's great yeah. information. But when you like, because people will give you like little tips and nuggets on how to accomplish the thing that you want from their own lived experience. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when you get like, oh, shit. You know, you can't you ain't getting this. This is exclusive. <laughs> it's exciting for us because we're like open minded. We want those opportunities. But for the person that you're talking about, that whole nigga, it's like. <laughs> they want to feel like you're going to do it for them. Like, oh, you actually want me to be a part of the fight? I thought you just wanted me to stand here and look cute. But see, my goal is power. Like, I want to be powerful. Mm -hmm. And I know that being powerful comes with useful information. Uh, it comes from collaboration. It comes from working with other powerful people. It comes from knowing when to ask a question and when to lead. You know, everybody, everybody wants to be the big dog. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, yo, man, like that's an illusion. Yes. Like every person plays a position and you just have to do the best at the position that you play in. But see, you want power because like you're talking about the government and that's where the real change is coming from. So like the power that you want correct me if I'm wrong, but you want an infrastructure. You want your own infrastructure so that you can support and not necessarily be a part of that system. Media is so powerful. Like entertainment is really cool. I like to be entertained. I like to watch, you know, all the <laughs> things that you like to watch. Mm -hmm. You sit there and it's so good. You're right. Yeah. But at the exact same time, I know that these tools can also be powerful for us to learn and build the institutions to help us propel in this new digitized AI world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like if human beings don't fight against technology, then we're going to get lost overindulging in, in, in content. And yeah. I'm like, yo, man, we need to have a better conversation and how we have a modern day lab labor movement. Yeah. And it, it goes back to identity. We are having that conversation about like people not knowing who, who they are because they are so engulfed in all of the social media, like turn it off, sit with yourself, figure out what you're passionate about. So that you can align with somebody else that is passionate about the same things and you don't be that whole nigga just trying to just be a part of everything that you're not even passionate about and you don't even show up for it. Conflict is good. Mm -hmm. Like Resistance is good. Res resistance is how you become strong. When yeah. you do some push-ups, you do a little 10 push-ups, you tear down your pectoral muscles and they build back stronger and all of a sudden you get a little definition and say, damn, man. Right. Then you, then you do 20 push-ups and 100 push-ups. Mm -hmm. then, then all of a sudden you got, instead of having man boobs, you know what I'm saying? You got, you got a little chest. <laughs> right, right. Some like, muscles. This is just doing basic ass work. Mm -hmm. And I'm just asking niggas to come and do some mental push-ups with me so that we can so we can have better messaging, better rhetoric. I want to market the black identity as being one of the most powerful, exclusive, luxurious experiences on the planet. What's up? Yeah, yeah. We need it so bad. Man, like, I, I've seen people do it. Yeah. Floyd McKissick is probably one of the greatest revolutionaries in the civil rights movement that no one ever talks about. Mm. He created Soul City, North Carolina. This black man built a city at the height of the civil rights movement, <laughs> and niggas didn't want to move there because he was a Republican. Yo, that's some fly shit. Soul City? Fucking Soul City. I mean, you can't that get... That shit sounds so dope. You can't get more niggerish than that, but I'm just... Soul <laughs> City. Hey, they was in there getting it. That's a, that's a good-ass time. He built a, a middle-class subdivision 
uh, not even subdivision, an entire city just for black, <laughs> well, not just for black folks. You know, it was just going to be black folks Whoever, in the city, right? But yeah, you was going to be part of that black infrastructure if you live there, though. It won't know. And I ain't never heard the word, the name Floyd McKissick in my life. Yeah, you were the, you're the only person I've ever heard that from. Man, and so like, there's a book about it, read about it. Uh, Soul City, huh? Mm-hmm. And so you get you get some information. You find about these dope individuals, and like that they, they weren't uh, getting water hoses pulled on them. They said he, <clears throat> Floyd McKissick, used government funding to start the city. And so we're always talking about man. I don't need no government help. The go- the United States government funds so many other governments on on this in the nation. <laughs> Excuse me. Mm-hmm. The United States government funds so many other nations. Uh, we fund Israel. We send money to Saudi Arabia. We fund so many wars. But when it comes mm-hmm. to helping the black community, we say no, no, no. Black power, black power. I mean, you got to have some dollars, man. <laughs> I just feel like use use the tools for your own good. Like, who cares? Like, you're in this you're in this country. Hey, here's a little secret. You live in America. This geographic location, North America, uh, specifically United States of America. Hi, the greatest American <laughs> alive, nigga. You are the greatest American alive simply because of where you live at. Yeah. And I'm saying to work with other people in your geographic location to have some worker rights. Right mm-hmm. in a class war to engage with other people in the exact same class, but you, but you so preoccupied with the color of your skin. No, black first, man. Mm-hmm. Black first, man. Yeah. <laughs> I want my I want my message to hit the most broadest audience possible, and that's every working class person in America who is a man specifically, mm-hmm. because if these niggas ain't got no money, don't no women want them. Yeah. Men be out here, man. You gotta do the work. You gotta do the work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. 50 plus years ago, men had a labor revolution in America where they where they uh, had strikes at all their companies to say, I demand a better wage. Right. They put their life on the line and get more money. And we'll tell a man right now, hey, go get some more money. And we don't even have the infrastructure to help him fight for more money. Listen. That's a lack of and accountability. Those are, right. And that's the same man that is soaking up the residual because of those other men that fought. Other men fought. But now you must fight, and you just you just riding on that nigga's coattails. Yeah, and that's some that's some bullshit. Like yeah. freedom is progressive. Mm-hmm. Like for real, freedom is progressive. In the yeah. technological age, you have to understand how to fight with technology. Mm-hmm. You have to have more better messaging. Yeah, shit, man. Like John Henry has to know how to use social media today. He can't just go out there with his hammer and say, "I'm just gonna beat this steam drill." <laughs> you cannot beat social media with a sledgehammer. Yeah, it, it can't. It can't be no blunt force. It's time to have some creativity and some imagination, but most importantly, collaboration. Niggas need to work with niggas, huh? Excuse me. Yeah, I don't want to offend you. Your sensibilities. Men need to work with Polo men. Tink tink. Polo tink tink. <sighs> They so lazy, though, and they're lazy because of so many reasons, anxiety, whatever. It's too much pressure. Right. But you, I think that people feel that pressure and they, it makes them lazy because they it's too much work to try to figure out what they what they are passionate about. Hey, here's the challenge. Right. This is an open platform. Come and help me build so that we can have some power. Mm-hmm. Yes. Challenge. If, if you have a grievance, <laughs> state your grievance, right? Mm-hmm. What's the reason why you don't want to do this work? I want to know. Huh? I'm raising my hand. I ask a question. Mm-hmm. I know when to ask a question. What's the problem? How can I help you? I want to be of service. Nigga. Yeah. Let's talk about S- it. Excuse me. I want to be of service, sir. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Respectfully. Use your powers for good and not inequity. So I'm still stuck on Soul City. Floyd McKissick is an exciting individual who used the United States government to build an entire city just for black folks. But for everyone, it was a cl- in a class war. We need people in the upper uh, upper echelon of society to work with us. We need like people like Kanye West to come and help us organize labor yeah, here. Yeah, it's so beautiful. That grocery store is probably like groovy groceries. Hey, I think LeBron James is one of the most powerful people and sports and in media Mm -hmm. but he has had the luxury of a a labor union like he has he has collective bargaining to get the money that he has and it's my personal opinion to see when when nba players say black lives matter when nfl players say black lives matter Mm -hmm. somebody from all your teams should go to all the uh businesses in your community and go help those people organize to have a labor union so they can have some vacation, so they can have some guaranteed holidays, so they can have some paid sick days, so they can have a higher wage, yeah. so they can have a family, so they can have a nice life like you because you're the highest paid employees in America. Why am I going so hard? Yeah, yeah. Because I'm tired of niggas running away from this work. Right. Mm-hmm. 
what am I doing? I'm about to go edit this video, post this video, and do some more work. <laughs> What's up, man? They're not walking it like they talk it. So, like, like uh, we had, in, in the 70s, they had their own Black Panther newspapers and everything. They understood that you had to have media so you could mm. communicate with the people. Hi, this is the motherfucking newspaper. <laughs> Get the word out. Goodness gracious. Yeah. Go tell somebody. Right. Man, him said that. He want, he want other men to come work with him so they come do this work. You know what happens when men start working with men? something powerful Man, hell yeah they, but first they're gonna start competing and like they're gonna get in shape mm -hmm. and then they're gonna look they're gonna look sexy and then they're gonna get us some money and then women are gonna be like oh shit that was those are those niggas over there yeah yeah <laughs> so i can't complain about a woman not being able to find a man mm. if i'm not creating the community for the men to be men what's mm. up you have to you have to create the opportunity for men to fucking step in pride that's beautiful i'm just saying man yeah it's beautiful it really is because what, like we get called gold diggers but it's not it's not the gold digging it's just it's a nature takes over when a woman sees that a man is going after something it's like innately subconsciously it's like oh he's a leader i'm so hype because provision <laughs> is important provision is so important simultaneously i understand that women are 50 percent of the workforce yeah yeah and so men have to have a spirit of collaboration with a woman Mm -hmm. articulate to her that the economy and the market has shifted but listen here if we work together this is what we can accomplish have some vision man make the vision plain nigga narrate the story for her <laughs> take her hand and, take her hand and say baby I, I, I ain't got them dollars right now but, right. Hey, but you getting the dollars right now and so we're gonna work together to go get some more dollars yes. some more dollars Shit. yeah yeah I'm saying make it happen I swear I said that some years ago like I was with the guy, great guy, whatever. And that was the end. That was just the story was like, I don't know what the vision is. I was begging like, hey, what's the plan? This is what this is my goals. But what are your goals? How can we? And it was like his goal was to get the pussy. Then he got the <laughs> pussy and know what to do with it. <laughs> I mean, like, we yeah, get yeah, so excited. Yeah. Like, oh, man, I got some Gina. Yes. But to your point was that had he had that infrastructure because he is a good person, but because of the lack of presence of it that was in his life had he had that look i know that right now in the dating conversation uh we won't be honest and in, in every relationship in this in this world mm. how can i be of service and if you're not willing to be of service then you're always gonna be like well if as a man if the only way that you can be of, of service is to provide money then you already have a problem because you're going to be in a relationship, you're going to be emotionally disconnected. You might be physically disconnected mm -hmm. because the only thing that you think is I have to go get this money so she could be happy. But she wants yeah. to have a full experience. She wants to experience a real human person. Right. And it's not the other person's fault that you're loving out of your pockets. <laughs> Hey, be a person of character and of substance and just watch how a person's eyes will light up because, like, damn, you're so interesting. It, yeah, it's really not that complicated. People aren't that fucking smart. Nature does just take <laughs> over. It really does. Like, nobody's that thinking that deep all the fucking time. Hey, I tell a man, right, to go be of service. Before you go be of service, uh, do 100 push-ups, walk a mile and read a book. And then tell a girl that you walked a mile, did 100 push-ups and read a book. And you might get a little, a little Gina, yes. It's so sexy. <laughs> it's so sexy. And you, you know why? Because it's like that discipline that he's going to put on himself, it's humbling because he went through the thing. So when you ask me to do the thing, you're going to be understanding that it took you some strength to do it. I get so excited because I know what needs to be done. And I know that if I don't do the work, that it's not going to be done. And I simultaneously also know that I can't do the work by myself. Mm -hmm. And so I get frustrated when I see capable people who don't want to use their talent to be powerful. <laughs> and that's frustrating. It's frustrating when you see that somebody's capable of something and they won't perform to that level. But that's what it's like. What you're passionate about is your passion for it. Like God put that there for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of us are doing the exact same thing. We're just doing it by ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, if, if we build the house together, we could build that shit so much faster. Right. I, I lived in a predominantly first generation Mexican neighborhood, right? These were all immigrants. Mm -hmm. And I watched these people would be two, three families in one house. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they'd, everybody's working, everybody's working, everybody's working. And then they buy a truck and then they go buy another house. And then they, and the, uh, the whole family, they go help them put the house together, put a porch yes, on their muscles. Yes. Then, then they barbecue. It's just community. 
and they invest in mm, each other. It's beautiful. And I'm not even trying to compare uh, uh, cultures. I'm right. saying these are tools on how to show the the spirit of collaboration. Right. Absolutely. And I, I mean, like you learn so much, you know, uh, I was also, I was living, you know, in the same community and a man told me about this thing called like Thonda, I believe if I'm saying it wrong, please forgive me. Mm -hmm. But it's when like you take 10, 12 families and everyone invests a hundred dollars into the pot and every month one family gets whatever the pot is. And yeah. so if it's 12 families, so it's $1,200 a month. And so it's like a savings plan from the community without going to the bank because a lot of these individuals don't have right. uh, identification and stuff. And so mm -hmm. it's a self-made saving system. It, it's a spirit of collaboration. It's community. Mm. I don't need the government to create community. I need men with the spirit of collaboration to create community. Yeah. It's, this ain't as hard as we think it is. It's really not that fucking complicated. It, but people don't know how to trust. Like that would take some trust for some families to come together and actually do what they said they're going to do. Hey, to be a person of character, to have some integrity, mm -hmm. like to do the to do the work, the inner work, to be the person, mm -hmm. so I can get the thing that I want, right? <laughs> yeah. Like everything in my life is a reflection of who I am. If I ain't got nothing, guess what that means about me? I ain't nothing. Fuck. Right. And that's how I look sideways when I look at people that are saying like, oh, I don't trust this or I don't trust that. It's like, well, you must not trust yourself. Then I start screaming at the whole entire world. Why ain't I nothing? Why ain't not nothing? Mm. <laughs> you answer your own motherfucking <laughs> question. <laughs> facts, facts. <laughs> it's always to the same point, bitch. It's called self-esteem. It's hey, look, always look, the look. same point. I just appreciate dope conversations. I appreciate you showing up for me. <laughs> yeah. And like, you know, I get, I, I live in a very strategic place, right? I live off of Martin Luther King Boulevard. And I don't know where you live at, but most of the time when you live off of Martin Luther King Boulevard, okay. it looks it looks like it sounds. <laughs> and, th and this woman right here, this lovely woman right here will come over here with no fear to say, I got to go do this work. I know gentlemen by man, man, you stay over there where, where that go, where that happens at. <laughs> for real. Don't you scared, scared of other black men for real? Mm-hmm. So if if black men are afraid of black men, I don't ever want to hear you say nothing about no white man. Right. For real. Yeah, that's facts. You, a black man is afraid to go around black people, huh? Yeah. Mm hmm. That's that complex. And then talk about some racism. Right. Because they are racist. <laughs> that's what people do. They project what they are. That's what the fuck they do. You scared of going into a certain type of city because you a grimy nigga. Man. And you know you would do some grimy shit, so you were scared. I walk up and down these streets every day, man. These wonderful people wave at me and say hi. Seven yep. miles a day, they wave at me and say hi. Man, yep. they stop in their car and say, you sure do inspire me to get up and go walk. I'm walking. telling you, they watching. Shit. <laughs> like, be a pillar in your community. I ain't got nothing, but I'm going to show up. I'm going to show up with whatever I got. How may I be of service? Can yeah. I help you carry your groceries? Little kids running around. Can I take out your trash? Man, I got $5 for both of you. Like, mm -hmm. invest in the people around you because you love them. It can all be so simple. Because, like, everyone's going to ask, what do you do? What do you do? I just live my life around beautiful people and I try to be of service and that's it. That's all. And all of his provisions is made being of service. Can you imagine that? That's probably unfathomable to some people. <laughs> Man, I'm just so thankful. I'm yeah. thankful for your time. I'm mm. thankful for your time. I'm thankful for having conversations. I'm thankful for the opportunity to be like great men like yeah. Gil Scott Heron, like Fred Hampton, who said, hey, you have to not only believe in something, but you have to go and fight for it. And if something happens to you while you fight for it, then I hope that you fought so hard that they know your name. Mm, your name. That's all we have is our name. What does your name stand for? Look up the fucking meaning of your name. I'm so tired of having conversations with people that don't know the meaning of their name. And it's fine because that's what I'm there <laughs> for, right? Like, I'm going to look it up for you and I'm going to tell you. But, like, what you've been called your whole life really does mean something because it gives you a... a, a identity and it all it makes sense some very powerful names mm -hmm. floyd mckissick mm -hmm. soul city fred hampton black panther revolutionary american patriot mm -hmm. gil scott heron the revolution will not be televised and your name the greatest american alive boom the greatest american alive the greatest american alive the greatest american alive the greatest american alive the greatest American alive.